Is this Wagyu beef tallow trend just complete bullshit? Welcome back to Comparison Cooking. My name's Kevin, and today we are gonna be covering this whole barbecue craze that hit this summer. Uh, make Aaron Franklin briskets at home. Even though if you've never cooked a brisket in your life, don't worry, beef tallow is going to do the trick for you. Uh, let's do a side by side i know you've seen a hundred of these but you know i'm going to give you a real honest feedback that also will give you the reason why this trend is hitting so hard and why people have really taken a beef tallow i will say right off the bat should you be making beef tallow absolutely it is phenomenal for making steaks at home in your kitchen you can use the beef tallow the render down fat and make uh, steaks right in your kitchen without that butter burning, without the oil burning and smoking up your entire kitchen. Should you use it on your brisket? Yeah, sometimes you should, all right? But I've done tallow before and it does make a really good brisket, but let's do a side by side to see what we really pick up. Or is it just our brain saying, wow, this is beef tallow. This is the one single brisket right in front of me. I'm not comparing it to anything else. All right, are, are our brains just tricking ourselves? Perfect example of this is I'm here in Maryland and in Maryland you can buy crabs, Maryland blue crabs, or you can go out and catch them. And every time you go out and catch them, for some reason, because you've taken those extra steps, the ones you caught taste better than the ones you bought. So as you take more steps, I'm very interested to see, is that the reason we are telling our brains, this is better than a regular brisket done the traditional way without this beef tallow craze. Let's get right to it. the Traeger Ironwood 885 for this cook because I had a lot of things going on during the day. So I had to walk away from the smoker a lot. I spritzed uh, around the three hour mark, four hour mark, five hour mark, and then we were getting into wrapping there. Then you saw the wrapping, how I did that there. Uh, just straight Wagyu beef tallow that was smoked for about three hours on the Traeger to try to get some uh, smoke into the Wagyu to enhance that flavor. After that, it was pretty straightforward. You know, the Wagyu beef tallow brisket did seem like it cooked a little faster once it was wrapped. So I don't know if that encasing of just complete liquid helped speed along the process. But as you saw, when I came back to check on the briskets, the one was just hitting 203. Uh, that was, uh, the Worcestershire and apple juice, apple cider vinegar mixture, that was hitting 203, whereas the Wagyu had actually overcooked, and that was user error, you know, I'm not perfect, sometimes these things don't go as planned, but it's super tender and a little, I'd probably say about four or five degrees overcooked, uh, so 
hopefully that's not too big of a caveat of the difference, but we are going to be tasting to see if that real buttery, you know, amazingness really pops through. So let's get to it. All right, brisket number one. This was kind of my own last minute thrown together. Got to put some type of liquid in the wrap. Uh, looks good. Let's give it a try. Mm. I've been practicing my delicious face. So let me try that again. Oh, oh so good. Oh, it's so good. All right, I'm just going to focus on taste. Very tender, very solid brisket. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of my best. It's got a nice bite, but super tender. Great flavor. Let's go to number two. All right, here we go. Round two. Um, yeah, this does just look to be just a little overcooked. Yeah, that just happened. Um, yeah, a little overcooked. That's okay. We're going for the coating and texture of the brisket to see if that made an amazing difference. It's almost like the Wagyu tallow, you know, right where you see that smoke ring, that artificial smoke ring. Uh, that that Traeger produced kind of encapsulated that piece to where it's falling off in the middle. I don't know. Let's see. Sorry. I didn't inject it. I didn't do anything like that. I just want to see what the magic of beef tallow could do. It's good. It's good. I'm not like doing backflips. Um, it tasted like buttery. Uh, so that's a good example, like a very silky smooth uh, taste profile to it. But now I'm not picking up any of the rub, that Texas bold that's really, really good. Check it out. Um, I'm not picking up any of those tones. It just tastes like a buttery brisket. Oh, should I do another one of my like delicious? Mm. Ah. <laughs> ah, you gotta try this. It's amazing. You just gotta go out and get one of these. Yeah, click on my Amazon link to buy that Wagyu beef towel. It's gonna change your world. No, guys. Let me break it down to what's happening here and why Wagyu is great but also just taking extra steps in your brisket process is also really good. All right, so let me start off with a couple of things. Was this my best briskets? No, they're actually, out of the briskets I've made recently, they're probably pretty subpar to what I've normally made. Uh, don't know what happened. It just, briskets didn't turn out as well. I would score the Wagyu brisket it's still super tender, but I'll probably chop it up. Uh, the flat portion of it, I just had a piece of both the points on uh, both the different briskets. And the points were, you know, I'd score them like a six, six and a half. Uh, the flats on the non Wagyu brisket, I would give, you know, like a 5.5. This is a scale of 10 people. And then my point on my Wagyu. Burps, a little dried out. I think that's what it did. Um, the point on the Wagyu beef tallow brisket, I, I'd score like a five. There just wasn't any flavor to it. Both points were super soft, really delicious uh, from that regards, like a tenderness. But as far as taste, I was picking up the rubs and all the you know other sprays that were happening on the first brisket versus the Wagyu brisket, Wagyu beef tallow brisket, it just tasted like there was a coat of butter on the outside of it. So I wasn't in love with that. Why would I go through all those steps to just get buttery texture? Um, 
So there's no seasoning, nothing like that, didn't pop. So will I use Wagyu again? Yes, I will. I will use it um, hopefully on my better brisket cook where it makes sense, but I'll probably mix it in uh, and maybe save it for the end, like mixing it in with barbecue sauce and then some Wagyu. And then before you serve, you dip it in that mixture and you serve it. That's a neat trick that I'm gonna be doing on an upcoming video to show you. Here's why I think this, ugh, this trend took off this summer. Number one, uh, they put in the title that it was Aaron Franklin's secret. And I mean, yes, who, who doesn't wanna know what Aaron Franklin's secret is? His secret is he probably has put in more time than anybody else on figuring out how to make brisket and make it really well. And he's got it down to a science. Do I think he uses Wagyu beef tallow? I don't know. I don't know if that's a secret. From what I've seen for people that have worked from him, they've never mentioned Wagyu beef towel. At least I've never seen that in any of the videos I've watched for people that have worked at Aaron Franklin's. So I kind of find it hard to believe. Maybe I'm wrong and that's okay. Share in the comments, I'm wrong, that's fine. But I think Aaron Franklin has just put in the work. He's put in more briskets than probably everybody I know combined times a thousand, 10,000, a million. That's what makes people great is when they put in all that time. Now for us as backyard smokers or amateurs, novice, medium experience, here's what is also happening. So rewind to your first brisket. What did you do? You put salt and pepper and you threw it on the smoker and you smoked that thing for like 15 hours. It took forever, you finally got it off. Yes, I made a brisket and it, it tasted all right. Then you find out, maybe I should wrap it. All right, that, that extra step you take is now making your brisket a little bit better. Well, next time, maybe I'll inject it and so on and so forth. So every time I added a new step, guess what? My brisket was even better than the time before. You know, it went from no wrap to wrap to injecting to adding Worcestershire sauce and other stuff into my wrap to, you know, really give it something extra. And my mind, whether it really did give it something extra or not, my mind said, you made extra steps. This was a tougher process than the one before instead of just throwing it on and cooking it. And so you, your mind tells you this is better, right? I worked harder at this, so therefore it is better. That's not the case with everything. And the Wagyu beef tallow, I've made my own beef tallow. This did not blow me out of the water compared to the choice tallow I trimmed up and made myself. It's pretty cool. I do recommend you buy it from time to time. I do not have an Amazon affiliate link for it. Uh, just search on Amazon if you want to give it a try. I did think it was pretty cool how, you know, you didn't have to make it and it just came in a container and you can use it for a lot of stuff in your kitchen. And that will make you a more versatile cook. And I think that's important. We should all be learning and growing. But as far as making it the best brisket ever, no. I think you should keep experimenting, figuring out what you like. I know people that like tin foil. They like making that boat thing. I've never done it. I don't have an opinion on it. Some people love it. Some people say, eh, whatever, it's okay. Keep experimenting. And the way to find out the secret to, Bran uh, to Franklin's, to Aaron Franklin's, is to smoke as many briskets as that guy has. And then I'm sure you'll come down with the perfect method to make amazing brisket. But to be a beginner and walk into a room that's never smoked a brisket and think that the real secret is beef wagyu, beef tallow wagyu. Sorry, it's late. It's been a long day. It's been crazy. It's, it's not the secret. It's not going to take your number two brisket on a scale of zero to 10 and turn it into a nine just by throwing some wagyu all over it. All right. If you make a eight out of 10 brisket, yeah, sometimes that tallow might step it up to a nine, but more than likely you'd rather want to get those other steps implemented 
you know, like injecting, if that really hits your taste buds right, uh, the wrapping, the way you like to do it, the rubs you like, you got to figure it out for yourself. We all have different taste buds. But as far as this goes, I'm really glad that Mad Scientist Barbecue did this video because I do think he made a lot of people realize I do need to add more steps to make better brisket. And that's very important because it is not just as simple as just throwing it on and pulling it off later and being like, here it goes. I guess that's all I want to cover about it. Uh, you know the drill, comment. If you got mean comments, leave them somewhere else. Uh, hit up that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe. We got some cool stuff coming around the corner and I don't want you to miss it. You guys have been great and I'll see you real soon. In hindsight, the premise of this experiment of beef wagyu tallow saving the day, I'm actually glad that it wasn't a perfect brisket, that I didn't hit a eight or a nine, that it came in at a you know subpar brisket level and that Wagyu tallow wasn't going to be the final determining factor to miraculously save the day. There's still a lot of things you need to get right on your brisket cook for that beef tallow to enhance it. So it really worked out cooking a poor brisket this time around to proving the point that it is not the end all be all that is going to save the day.